welcome back to Timeless Steel Garage. We're back on the Camaro and we're gonna keep putting all this Detroit Speed welding body modification stuff in. Today we're gonna do Detroit Speed Quadrilink rear suspension kit for a stock axle. Now, I know what you're thinking, I'm putting a Ford 9 inch in here. You're right. But I'm gonna weld new stock axle brackets to that 9 inch and then I'm gonna use these stock brackets to bolt the 9 inch to the car. So the part number for the kit that I'm using is 041728DS, as in Detroit Speed. And uh, so far, super impressed. This stuff, I mean, the guy who did the welds on these, or gal, whoever it did, uh, I'll, I'll never achieve this level of welding. Um, all this stuff is laser cut, it's thick, it's stamped, it, it interlocks together like a puzzle piece. And I'm super impressed with it. So I've got it all laid out on the table here in no particular order. I mean, just look at the thickness of this axle bracket. Can you see that? I mean, this is like race car stuff, you know? So I'm excited about it. Um, and it's ditching the third member, not third member, the torque arm Camaro thing that these third gens all had for these really nice adjustable bars and an adjustable track bar so the whole rear end will be adjustable while in the car while bolted to the car nothing has to come out it can all be adjusted on a machine so i'm excited about it and i think it's going to take this car from being an old junk third gen body to okay we've got a serious thing going now so let's take you in the car and get started and you're asking yourself have I ever installed one of these kits before? No, I haven't. I've never installed a four, four link before, really. But uh, there's no time better than now, and we're gonna figure it out together. All right, so we're back in the car, my favorite place to be. Um, they send this pretty sweet template. Um, it's all CAD design, it's got a scale on it and everything. And uh, tells you the measurements you need. So 8.625, which is eight and five eighths from the top of the trunk pan down to the top of the bracket and six and a half inches from the edge of the inner quarter panel brace to the outside line. So this is the inner quarter panel brace right here, this, this line. And we're really setting this line here. And it looks like this is the important line to set. And once we cut this out, we're gonna end up moving this cut line into wherever it contacts the inner frame rail. So pretty simple. I just took my time just like doing the uh, closing plate and I used the machinist weld uh, ruler and a, and a, and a regular old uh, measuring tape here. And I just took three, I, I took a whole bunch of spots because you want this to be right. And uh, used the scribe, marked my line. And then I found that for this down here, using a machinist, weld, uh, machinist ruler to push against the paper to scribe against worked out pretty well. And we're gonna end up flipping this up, or we're gonna flip it like this um, to do that side. But I'm gonna just do this side today and then we'll do that side another day. But let me just uh, peel this off so you can see what we're working with here. So I initially screwed up here. So that's why I said, just take your time measuring. And we've got our scribe mark here for where we're gonna cut into the car. And the theme with all this stuff from Detroit Speed seems to be tight cuts, makes your life easier. So next step here is I'm going to cut this piece out of the car. And uh, the first thing we're gonna be welding in is this guy right here. And this is gonna sit just like that. And it's basically what the upper link for the axle is gonna bolt to, the upper four link. So, for now, I gotta clean all the stuff out from under the car so we don't have a fire, including the stuff up here so we don't have a fire again. And then we'll get to cutting. All right, so there's the cut. This is the cut that matters right here because this is gonna actually get cut in more and I'll show you what I'm talking about. It smells like turpentine in here now because of the old gas that was in these fuel lines, but. These fuel lines, brake lines, bracket, I don't really care about them. They're old, rusty, and I'm not gonna use them again, but make sure you get them out of the way if you do care about them. Um, but you can see how the frame rail 
isn't straight it curves so the instructions call for us to cut to the frame rail and basically get rid of this edge and then we're going to end up pushing that upper control arm mount or the, that plate up against the uh, frame so we're going to have to clean all this paint off around here because there's some plates that go under here as well okay so now i trim this inner cut so you can see the outside line is what you care about well you get the idea you end up losing like another half an inch down here and nothing up here so it tapers down like that but i'll show you on the bottom <clears throat> So here's what I'm talking about. So the frame rail from viewed underneath, it curves inward. It's not straight. So this line here you want straight and now we're going to butt that mount up against the frame here, which we'll have to use clamps later when we weld it to pull it in. But now we got to clean all this stuff out. So here is this side and it's got that wall on the inside of it. We're going to put it right up against the frame and then line it with our upper mark like that and then we're going to use um, self tappers to pull the sheet metal tight against the plate because you can see it doesn't fit perfectly and then uh, we'll get to welding but for now i got to clean all these paint off i got to clean this metal up i don't really need to show you guys that i'm going to try to take as little paint off as possible also varying ways to take paint off i'm going to try one of these uh, red scotch bright spinners here. I've got a 120 grit uh, flap wheel for a drill. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna get to work. All right guys, do yourself a favor and wear some kind of a mask or a respirator when you're doing this kind of work. I never used to care when I was younger. I'm getting older now and I do care. I mean, it's just nasty, right? So a steel wire brush makes quick work out of that old, um, Pro Seal, um, but the that big sanding disc I used, the three, it's basically an 80 grit red Scotch Brite in a wheel. It took that one whole wheel to do this, and then um, I used that 120 grit flap wheel to do underneath here. And I'll end up cleaning that up a little bit more, but for now, I got my frame wheel. So now I'm going to vacuum everything out, wipe everything down with acetone, prep the steel piece, clean that up. And then we're gonna self tap it into the car and start welding. But remember, welding is the reward for prep work. All right, it's starting to get exciting now. I got my metal prepped. I got both surfaces cleaned with acetone. And we're gonna line it up with my scribe. Make sure it's pushed against the frame rail. And I'm gonna use some self tappers I've got laying around to hold it exactly where it needs to be. I just, I want it tight against the metal. There we go. That helped pull it, pull that sheet metal right up against this plate so we have a nice tight weld. Do one right here. Basically, you want all your corners tight. I think I'm going to need two more and we'll be good. Okay, definitely need one down here. And you can see now how much tighter that is to the body of the car. So, four or five self tappers there. It's part of the car now. Let's get to welding. All right, all right, all right. Let's get to it, eh? No fires this time. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Yeah.
All right, that doubler or the upper mount plate or whatever you want to call it is in. You don't need to weld around the whole perimeter like I did, but uh, I ain't trying to save on welds. This is pretty much the foundation that everything else builds off of. So I just want to make sure that that thing is not going anywhere. The good news is if you burn through in a couple of spots, you can access the back. Obviously you're looking for penetration and all those burn marks means we got good penetration. So that's what I care about. And uh, a couple spots I can fix right there. But the next thing here is this lower support plate. It fits pretty good, but I'm definitely gonna have to pull it tight on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is tack weld the top here a little bit and then use some screws again to pull the bottom down to the body. Got the surface prepped, got the plate cleaned. I'm gonna tack the top. Now these are eighth inch plates now, so I can turn the heat up a little bit. I'm just gonna tack the top and then I'm gonna use some self tappers to kind of pull the plate down where I want it. made quite a bit of progress here I've got the main plate welded in the lower support is welded in I've ground the uh, rosette welds flat and now we're gonna put in these inner doubler supports so this guy goes here and this guy goes here and I had to trim this side a little bit to make it fit uh, the instructions want you to paint the back side of this for rust prevention I'm going to just weld it like this. I'm going to end up drilling an access hole to put some Eastwood rust encapsulator spray in there. Um, but I've got this all prepped. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and weld this little guy up right here. Okay, I've got this tunnel doubler plate welded in. I've got this grinded, this fit as best as I as best as I can. It's not perfect, but it's close. And uh, so now I'm gonna go ahead and weld uh, this inner brace in, and uh, well, let's get to it. You got the inner brace welded to the doubler plate and the lower mount, and now we just got to take this guy and line it up with basically the the inner brace there kind of want to be lined up on the same on the outside and you can see we're just basically reinforcing the uh, both sides of this upper link mount and uh, yeah let's get to it All right, well, the exciting part is the inside of the car is done. And it is a lot of welding, but you know what? That is not going anywhere. If the rear end comes out of the car, it's taking the back half of the car with it. You know what I'm saying? So now we get to go underneath the car. And what we're gonna do is, my light is dead, but you can see there, I'm using a pair of welding C-clamp pliers to pull the inner brace tight against the frame well. So now we're going to weld the frame rail to that inner mount. And now this is where that upper link for the top of the axle is going to actually bolt to, is inside this pocket. Once we get that done, we're going to weld this guy like that to support the sheet metal. And then after that, we're gonna clean all this up. There's got a couple of burn through spots I gotta fix. And then we're just gonna put a coat of primer on it. And uh, one half of the car is done.
This side's done. And pretty happy with how it turned out. I'm happy with the welds. Um, the kit is phenomenal. And uh, the hard part's getting the base plate welded to the sheet metal. Once you get to the point where you're welding eight gauge on to eighth gauge, it's super easy. And this kit goes together like uh, Legos. Um, it's a lot of welding. Um, one day per side, I would say, if you're a regular guy with me, I've been out here breathing this stuff long enough today. Backside is done too. I did have a couple of burn through spots, like <clears throat> that guy right there. And it's just, it welds dirty back here, just like the rest of the underside of the car. But I'm gonna clean up a couple of these burn through spots and do some more welding down here. Once I can get it up on a lift because I just, my neck can't handle being on my, on, and ugh, my neck just can't handle that position for long with the welding. And I have a lift, so why bother? Um, yeah. Pretty stoked on it, man. I mean, it's, it is an expensive kit, but I think it's worth the money. Uh, it, the, the metal welds so clean. When you're welding on this Detroit Speed Metal, it's super clean. And honestly, the body welded clean too up here. You know, it's all in the prep work. And now we just got to do the rinse, wash, repeat, do it on the other side. So, yeah, I've been out here for a good while. Started this morning, and it's about three in the afternoon or coming up on three. Had a lunch break, you know. Anyways. I'm not gonna bother filming the other side because it's the exact same process. So thank you for tuning in. That's the Detroit Speed Quadrilink kit. Again, if you're considering buying this kit, it is amazing. Just buy it. There's no way the rear end's coming out of this car unless it rips the back half of the car out. So thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, please click the button. It helps me a lot. Like, tell your friends, comment. We'll see you next time here on Timeless Steel Garage. Thanks for Detroit Speed and Engineering for sponsoring this build.